Think art. Think red. With no less than nine comrades and 12 Two Ocean Ultra Marathons under her belt, Linda Doak is undoubtedly one of the fittest women in Africa. She's made a name for herself around the world as a leading off-road long-distance runner. I'm essentially a trail runner, so for me, leg strength and core strength are the most important. So I do a lot of hill running, uh, uphill and downhill, and uh, I supplement that with uh, quite a bit of gym work. The main trail season in South Africa is in winter. So we're running out in the, in the elements uh, a lot, in the wind, in the rain, and in the cold, importantly. So it's really crucial that we keep our, our health up. And we do this through healthy eating, uh, being careful with the right kit, obviously not staying cold and wet for too long, and essentially getting enough rest and making sure you get enough sleep. Living in the Cape, I'm spoiled for choice with mountains to run. And being a trail runner, I need to have good leg strength, so really, I choose my mountains. Often pushing her body for over 100 kilometers at a time, it's essential that Linda keeps an eye on her health to prevent serious illness and injury. Linda is now connected to the ECG monitor, okay, which has several leads that are attached to different areas of the heart. Essentially, what is happening is that she's cycling, so this is a stress ECG as opposed to a resting ECG which would be done at rest. So on the computer monitor we can see a tracing of her heart function while she's busy exercising. She also has a blood pressure cuff attached to her as well so we're able to monitor the blood pressure response during exercise too. Her body fat percentage and the results from a lung functioning test are combined with all the other data to paint an overall picture of her current health and fitness. Your overall results, Linda, showed that you are very fit, that your heart and lungs are functioning perfect. All the other tests that we did show that you're in, in great shape. I need to train every day and inevitably I get a runny nose here and there. At what point should I not train? Okay, well what's probably most important is exercising with a fever. What this basically means is that your body is busy fighting an infection, whether it's a virus or a bacteria. Now there's a chance, and it's a very small chance, but we don't know who it's going to happen to, that, the, that those pathogens will affect the heart muscle itself, and that your body mounts an antibody response to those infections and actually attacks the heart muscle. And this is called myocarditis. What are the best ways for people, particularly athletes, to stay free of colds and flu? What you need to do is to listen to your body. Your body is telling you something. If you're feeling sick or definitely if you've got a fever, I would avoid exercise at that stage and rest, especially in the initial stages of feeling sick and fluish. The other important thing that you need to remember is to continue to eat a balanced, healthy diet. In that way, you're going to get enough micronutrients and you're going to get adequate vitamins in your diet as well, which will hopefully prevent illnesses. You are an elite athlete, so that does put you at a higher risk of infections. This is newer research, but for the general population, regular physical activity at a moderate intensity, which is a brisk walk or a light jog of about 20 to 30 minutes, in fact does improve your immune system. So this is the kind of message that we want to get out there, and this is why we advise people to exercise. Doctors strongly advise that you rest and refrain from exercise when you have symptoms below your neck, including including a cough, chest pain, and body aches. For more information, visit thinkred.co.za I want to live the best life